Hey guys, it's Lisa. Welcome back to another recipe video. Today I've got three vegan holiday main dish recipes to share with you that I think would be perfect to share with your friends and family during this holiday season. These recipes are so good and I'm super excited about this video because it feels so holiday -y and festive because all the meals are really like hearty and comforting. And of course they're all really easy to make and can also be made ahead of time which I think is super helpful especially during the mad busy holiday times. Yeah, okay, I think that's everything I wanted to say before getting started, so let's jump right into the recipes. Okay, first let's make some vegan pesto ricotta stuffed shells. Start by cooking your jumbo pasta shells until al dente, following the instructions on the package with some salted water. While that's boiling away, make some vegan pesto ricotta by adding the vegan ricotta, basil, and pine nuts into a food processor and processing it until the basil and pine nuts are blended in. I'm using the vegan ricotta that I have on my blog, but you can use any vegan ricotta of your choice. Also, can any of you tell I'm using Thai basil? Yes, I know it's weird, like what the heck, but it's unexpected and it's good. But if you want to keep it classic, just use some Italian basil. By now, your shells should be done cooking, so just drain it and then rinse it with some cold water to stop it from cooking and sticking. Now into your baking dish, add in the marinara. You can save some to pour on top of the shells later or just add it in all now like I did here. I just think it looks a little less messy, but it tastes the same. Then the fun part, stuff your jumbo shells with the vegan pesto ricotta. I add in about one heaping tablespoon to two tablespoons of the ricotta, just enough so it kind of peeks through the little shells but isn't overstuffed. And then just place the stuffed shell into your baking dish on top of the marinara. The amount I have written on the blog is for two small baking dishes like this one or one large baking dish and it makes around 20 to 25 shells depending on how much you stuff your shells and how many might break. Once all the shells are stuffed, you can pour on the extra marinara now if you save some. Then just cover it with some foil and then bake it in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. And then take it out of the oven, take off the foil, and then bake it for another 10 to 15 minutes. Once it's done baking, top it off with some vegan parm or vegan melty cheese and some fresh basil and serve it up hot. This dish is so so good and really quite filling but not like in a there's a brick in my stomach kind of way. I think it's a really great dinner party dish because you can easily take as many shells as you want and it's really easy to make. Okay for the next recipe we're going to make some gnocchi and cheese. Yes guys, gnocchi mac and cheese. First we gotta make the cheese sauce so into a high speed blender, add in the plant based milk, cashews, cooked carrots, cooked potatoes, garlic, mustard, miso paste, lemon juice, onion powder, paprika and salt and some nutritional yeast, and then blend it until really smooth. Set that aside and then just prepare some of your favorite gnocchi. I'm using homemade cauliflower gnocchi, which I have a recipe for on the blog and will be coming out with a video tutorial on how to make it soon. But if you live in the US, you can just use the Trader Joe's cauliflower gnocchi, which I actually just copied because we don't have that in Canada, or you can just use any store-bought gnocchi. My personal favorite way to prepare gnocchi is in the air fryer or baking it because it makes it crispy and with the sauce, mm, so good. I use an air fryer when I'm making smaller servings like I did here because I didn't really have a dinner party to go to. But if I was making this for a party dinner, I'd bake the gnocchi pieces in the oven or if you like chewy gnocchi, you can just simply cook them on the stove top. Once the gnocchi is done cooking, just mix in the cheese sauce and then top it off with some red chili flakes, vegan parm, and some pepper. It's really really good just like this or you can take it to the next level by putting it in a baking dish with some breadcrumbs and vegan melty cheese on top and then baking it in the oven for a couple minutes to crisp up the top and melt the cheese. I know this is a really small portion that I made for this video but I just thought this would be an amazing holiday dinner dish because you can basically make it ahead of time by blending up the cheese sauce, cooking the gnocchi in advance and then mixing it all together when you're ready. And then you can also just heat it up in the oven right before serving it. I just thought it was a really fun way to mix up the classic mac and cheese and I've just been loving the texture of gnocchi lately. Last but not least, let's make some kabocha sweet potato casserole. First, we need to roast the kabocha in sweet potatoes, so just pop some kabocha that's been cut into pieces and sweet potatoes that's been cut lengthwise at 400 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes until tender. In the meantime, we're gonna make the pecan crumble topping. So into a bowl, add in the maple syrup and nut butter and stir it to combine. Then add in the cinnamon and salt and then stir. Add in the chopped pecans, oats, and some almond flour or oat flour and then mix it until it's all combined and crumbly. Then lastly, just gently toss in the coconut sugar. And we're going to prepare an egg-like mixture by combining some arrowroot starch and some plant-based milk into a bowl. 
Once the kabocha squash and sweet potato is fork tender, scrape the flesh into the food processor and discard the skin. The sweet potato is really easy to scoop out with a spoon, but I recommend using a knife to cut off the skin for the kabocha. Then add in the vanilla and the maple syrup arrowroot mixture, cinnamon and salt, and blend until smooth. You might need a spatula to scrape down the sides a couple times for even blending. Once it's nice and smooth, transfer the mash into a baking dish and then spread the tops evenly until it's nice and flat. Then top it off with a pecan crumble. Bake in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes, rotating the dish halfway. This sweet potato casserole with the addition of the kabocha makes it super creamy, light and fluffy, and with the crispy pecan crumble, mm, it's just so good, okay? And Eric really loved this one for his meal prep. He mixed it in with his meals and he really enjoyed it. And I know some of you will probably comment that this is a side dish or even a dessert, but I did a poll on Instagram and 71% of you said that you would consider this a main dish. So I just went with it. Obviously Thanksgiving and holiday dinners, there isn't just one main dish, but I think it's satisfying enough to be considered an entree. I don't know, but it's good. So try it out and taste it for yourself. So those are all the holiday recipes I have for you guys today. I hope you really enjoyed this video and try out some of the recipes. And even if you don't get around to making these recipes for a specific holiday dinner, I think they make really great meals for any day or even meal prep because they can be made ahead of time and also keep really well in the fridge or freezer. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to stick around for more recipes like these. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all having an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.